hey, hey everyone. So I'm gonna be following the tutorial for the Flow PWA walletless um, blog post slash guide and kind of walk you through how you would set up a simple Flow walletless experience on uh, a slip, on, on our mobile device, right? Leveraging PWAs. I'm not gonna dive into PWAs and what they are. You can check out the blog post um, for that. So first thing. Uh, we're actually just going to use create react app to actually just generate a PWA template. So right now we're not doing anything related to flow, right? So we just do create react app. We're going to name the app. I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to call it blog video PDA. And then you want to pass in a template. Create react app already has a template to help you kind of bootstrap your PWA. Um, cause remember PWA is a concept, not coupled with blockchain. It's just kind of gotten popular recently because of friend tech and whatnot. So we're going to run it with this template. So this is going to generate our project for us. So give this a moment. Give it a second, now it's putting in the template. Cool, we have it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually, um, let me just open up a new window in VS Code and we'll use that here. So I've opened the folder that I just created in VS Code. Um, yeah, so, you know, just like you would normally, you could, uh, run this guy by doing, um, something like, uh, you know, we're using, uh, you could do npm run start, which would run this script, which would start this and open a new browser which starts this like, you know, basic React app that, you know, we're all very familiar with here uh, when you create a React app. So how do we turn this into a PWA? Well, so the key is you should have gotten, it should have created these folders, um, service worker and service worker generation. I won't go too deep into what each is meant to do, but the important thing is, I mean, you can do that on your own time, but the important thing is that, um, in service worker generation, um, where is it? You want to look for an index where this is being used. So we're bringing in serv service uh, worker generation. Um, you want your app to work offline and load faster. You can change unregister to register. So we're gonna do that because we want our app, app to work offline because we want the mobile uh, native uh, experience, right? So uh, that is basically, you can read the comment on there on what it is meant to do, right? But you want, you want this to be a uh, register, um, essentially. Okay, so once you've done that, let's actually build it. Because right now it's running locally, but you actually, you actually want to be able to uh, build your PWA, right? Because now you're going to like build it and it's going uh, um, to run locally on your mobile device. So to do that, we can run this command npx serve build and yes let's install serve if you don't have it and now you can actually visit this url to go to your um, uh, website which i will show you in a second just give it a second and let it build or sorry we have to build it first so what you want to do is build build your app first. Now it's creating your production build. And once you build it, then you want to actually serve your build, right? So we have this URL, this HTTP URL that we can visit. So instead of localhost, we're just going to go to the HTTP URL and voila, we're at the, we're at the PWA. Now, 
Uh, one thing I do want to call out is you're going to run into a lot of issues dealing with third parties if you don't have a, a secure uh, connection. So you want this to be HTTPS, and I highly, highly recommend using something like uh, MG Rock to to kind of port in this uh, this port of uh, 3000 to run it. So basically, what you would do is you would run your app, and then I already have MG Rock installed, but you would basically just do MG Rock HTTP 3000, and the 3000 is because that's the port we're running on here in this network. You run this guy and you're going to get this URL, which is be a secure URL. So this is what you can use to actually test your uh, PWA. So you can even like go on this on your mobile device to test. That's what, that's the way I would kind of recommend. So if I go to this link, you can ignore this for now and you can visit the site. All right. So three different ways I'm accessing the site. This is what I would recommend you putting into your actual uh, mobile browser to test your PWA flow, but make sure you build before you um, uh, serve. You know, your build if you have any like pending changes it's cool uh, very simple right and just like that your PWA is honestly ready to go you can run it on mobile so pretty simple stuff I won't get into too deep into like the nuances of PWA um, one thing I will recommend is this uh, library that I've used in my sample app that you can see uh, in the inflation app is there's this library called the react iOS PWA prompt I highly recommend putting this into your project. So when someone visits it on Safari, you basically get a prompt uh, indicating to the user and how to uh, add it to their home screen to make it feel like a native app, um, essentially. And you could just put this prompt in the uh, in the most root level. Uh, I usually put it in just like index.js, like literally right here. I'll just put in the prompt, like somewhere here. Um, Actually, we can even just do that. Let's do that uh, just to get a, kind of familiar with it. So let's do, what is it called? It's called React iOS. So we'll do this guy. npm install. Let's get this guy in there. And then let's uh, go ahead and import him. Now you could just put it into your app right here. PWA prompt. Let's see the parameters. I'm not gonna, I can't show you how it is on mobile, but the main things we want debug to be true so that it can, I can show you on the browser, but obviously in a production environment, you wouldn't want um, debug to be true. And let's run this guy. I think I might be missing some, uh, oh, there you go. There it is, it's coming up here. Obviously you don't want it on your browser to come up, you want it to come up on your mobile. The component takes care of that for you. Um, you would just uh, debug, you would just get rid of this parameter. Debug is def by default set to false. If you check here, pass a boolean prompt. Defaults to false, which is like the production mode. And there's a bunch of other different like options you can play around with on how you want to basically build it. So I kind of recommend something like that in your PWA. But that's cool. Now, so now that we have all of that, um, we want to integrate it with Magic, right? Because we want a mobile wallet experience. So uh, I would recommend going to magic.link and once we're in magic.link, I'm going to go ahead and log in. I already have an app. I'll create a new app though for testing this um, PWA blog video. Mm, I think we want co-branded high conversion. I think we want universal here. Wallet and I, I guess you can play around with both of these options. I think, uh, you know, we want to dedicate it here actually. You can play around with both of these uh, options, but I'm, I'm using dedicated for my case. Uh, check out the magic documentation if you're curious of what the universals are used for. So let's say we create this app. Now this is the important thing, right? We get this, uh, this key, this uh, API key that we have. Um, so if you look, 
you'll see now we want to actually install the magic uh, libraries, right? So I'm going to grab the Uh, the library that you're gonna need. You're also gonna need FCL, so we'll go ahead and get that done. So npm install these three libraries. Great. Yep, give it a sec. And then uh, once we have that, let's create a helper file to basically grab our um, magic instance whenever we need it, right? So let's create a new file called magic.js and I'm gonna copy and paste the code from the uh, blog post here. And then this we we're gonna change, we're gonna create an environment file. So we'll do a new and then we're going to put React App Magic Key and we're going to set it to this guy. Yeah. And then once we have that, we have our magic instance. So we can use this to log in. I'm using, I'm defaulting to testnet now, but you could use it on um, mainnet or something if you want. Um, so let's go ahead and create our uh, contacts. So we'll create a new folder. And this is basically just going to manage the current user, right? So we'll create a folder. I'm just going to follow the, the video. We're going to current user contacts. And we're going to pass this down at the root of our React. But you could you could use Redux, any kind of storage system here to um, you know maintain state of the current user, right? So we're creating a um, React context here. And then we also need to create the provider, right? So let's do current user provider.js and I'm gonna copy the code from the, and I'll, I'll go over the code and essentially what it's doing, but from the blog post. So basically what this is doing here is uh, there's basically three important pieces of state that are returned, right? The current user, which is the current magic user, that's like uh, walletless and managed by magic a way to update the current user. So this is what you would call if you were logging in or something. And just if, if we're in the process of grabbing the current magic user. So pretty, pretty simple stuff um, here. And once we have this, we want to actually use the, uh, the, um, uh, the context, right? We want to use it in our application. So let's go back to index. Let's import the uh, user provider that we just created. Current user provider. There you go. Um, and then we can put this at the top most root level. And then now we have, I'm sorry, I did not mean to do that. <clears throat> now we have the uh, current user basically will be uh, available to us. So if I run this guy, or let's just go into our main file, app.js file, right? And let's just make sure what happens if we try to grab like the current user. So let's import the um, current the context because we're going to use the context to get the current and if you're not familiar with React contexts, I would just look it up on the side. I'm going to assume you are, but it's just a good way to manage state and you can pass it down uh, via the component like path. Um, current user context, I think it was called. Yep, it is. And then um, we also want our use context hook. So we'll just do here. And then here we'll do, we'll grab it, grab the current user, the set current user equals use context, and then we'll do current user context. There you go. 
and you'll see I'm gonna log the current user and no user will come up here. So we're gonna do npm run to start. Uh, let's give this guy a second. Ooh, there's an error. Oh, did I put at the wrong time? Come on, time. What does it not like about this? What is it? Cannot find module context current user dot context. Oh, this should just be like. Oh, it's missing the API key. I thought I put it in there, did I not? Let's console log this guy, just make sure it's not empty. You can see it's undefined. Oh, this should be up one level, so let's move it up one level. And then now it should pick it up. Yeah, it got it. Cool. So you can see the, the current user is null, right? So that's fine and dandy. So let's now make it so that when you let's just add a login button here very simple i'm not going to focus on styling this right now but what we do is we'll create a button right we'll do login and then we'll do on click we'll do We'll create the helper function. I'm gonna grab the helper function from the tutorial. So this is our login helper function. That we use. And then what we want to do here is we want to just, just call in log in. And if for the sake of this example, instead of passing the phone number, I'm going to um, use, uh, we can use the email flow instead. Um, yeah. I believe it's login. Let me look up what it is in the magic documentation. It's something like that. Oh wait, that's not the right one. Here we go. in the dashboard it should be somewhere here let's see where is the documentation do they talk about oh that's not good it's a 404 here oh here we go Somewhere is the email login widget. Here we go. So we're going to use this guy instead for the sake of this example. But, you know, 
in a, in a mobile experience, you probably want to use um, like a mobile. And then I'm just going to create a temporary fake email to show. I'm creating, I use Yacht Mail, created this temporary email, right? Something like that. And then, right. And we're gonna comment this guy out, but, and we're gonna get rid of that, and we're gonna get rid of that. So it's gonna log in with this, that temporary email, and it's gonna, and then we're gonna update the current user, basically when they click this login button. So, and then I'm gonna log the current user and it should have the, the new current user, right? So let's try that. We already run start, or sorry, NPM, I'm using NPM here. You can use whatever you prefer to test this guy. And I have a control log that is okay. Um, yeah, so magic is actually gonna be like that right there. Cancel this guy. Let's get our developer console ready to go. Hit log in. Uh, we got an email in our temporary email. Here is my inbox. So this is the code that we got. Um, I'm gonna copy this guy, paste it here, and it's gonna create a flow uh, wallet for us on testnet. Give it a second here. Oh, what you would have wanted. Okay, there you go. Now you can see we have an address created for this account. So yeah, it's that simple. You have a PWA now. I log in with email. You can run this all on your mobile device. Log in and yeah, use Magic to have a walletless experience. You can add account linking um, to link some uh, non-custodial uh wallets to this child account which uh you can check out my inflation example i'll have a video example and the example code where i do that exactly um and yeah this that's pretty much it to log in oh and one last thing i want to show you how to run a transaction right so how do we run a transaction so let's create another you want to use um scripts is pretty self-explanatory i'll go over how to run transactions so let's just create you know, let me, let me grab the code from my the blog post. So if you have something like this, you're going to want to finally use FCL here because we're running transactions. You use the authorization method that um, you get from your Magic SDK. Here's a very simple uh, transaction example. Um, we're just, we're literally uh, not running any code. Um, but this, that's essentially how you would run a transaction. So if I created a basic, basic transaction, um, like as basic as it can be, uh, I would do transaction. It won't take any parameters. This is the cadence code and we'll just return. Oh, sorry. We won't do anything. We'll just return hello world to transaction, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, and then there's no args here, so we can get rid of the args. And then, yeah, that's really it. So let's, we're gonna log the transaction data and then we'll create another, the, uh, you don't need the current user because we're just running a transaction here and we'll create another button. It's gonna say run transaction. And this is gonna be transaction example. We're gonna run this guy. And then, and then, yeah, that's basically what you would want to do. So let's refresh this guy. So we're gonna refresh this guy. You can see that we got the current account that we logged in from earlier. And logout is very similar to FCO. You would just do there. There's a function to do logout in the in the documentations, which you can take a look at here. I had it up here. Um, and then uh, let's run the transactions. Let's clear, clear this guy. We're gonna run the transaction. And 
There was an error, either offline and configure. Oh, we need to actually configure our FCL, uh, FCL to set up when we're setting up our FCL. So give me a second here. Same thing that we always do. Let's just import FCL. And then let's do fcl.config. And here, let me gonna just copy this. So yeah, you, you wanna make sure you actually config, configure your FCL to set up essentially. And then uh, let's just rerun this guy. Cancel this guy. We got the current user, we're gonna run the transaction. Return, prepare, oh, sorry. I didn't write my cadence transaction correctly. So you want you want this to be within an uh, execute. You want prepare first, right? To actually have the person who signs the transaction. And then in the uh, execute, we will have, we're not gonna actually do anything in the prepare, but in the execute, we will return hello world. Let's try this guy now. Cancel this guy, run transaction. And expected void got string. Sorry, I need to define the return type. Bear with me here. Um, String, or sorry, no, this would be at the transaction level. So, uh, um, yeah, and then let's rerun this guy. Make sure we have our current user. We do, we run the transaction. Oh, okay, I don't remember the syntax of this off the top of my head. Let me just quickly cadence transaction. How do you define the return type again? Transaction. Or I guess, can you even return? I don't think you can return in the transactions. Yeah, you might, uh, yeah, that's right. I don't think you can. Can you? I don't recall. I never needed to. Um, so. Let's see. Uh, we can just. Let me just try one thing and then if that doesn't work, then we can just not have it return it. Let me just try. If this doesn't work, then we know we can't do that. I thought you could. Yeah, I'm okay, so we can ignore this now. The point is you can run a run a transaction. Right? So instead of return, we'll just do like uh We'll just do, um, hmm, what's a good way to kind of show this? We can do like a post and we can do one equals equals one, like some like statement that's always gonna be true. And then, yeah, we'll leave it at that, I guess. Give me... Okay, let's just run this guy then. Uh, parsing failed. Oh, we need to assert. Okay, let's just, yeah, whatever. We have the most basic transaction, it literally does nothing. Let's see if it actually 
it does not like that. I'm actually curious. So you run the transaction and yeah, you can see the transaction was sealed and it ran successfully. So you would just run a transaction as you would normally as the events and everything. And you use the, the Wallace account. Now, obviously the, the app is taking custody of this account. It's using this for the assets within the domain of this app. You could come in and link in a parent account to this child account, um, a non-custodial account that you own via um, uh, account linking, which kind of unlocks the power flow. But just like that, you have a very simple mobile experience where you're able to log in with an email and run transactions and flow and basically just start working with the chain and talking to the chain and doing whatever you want. Like I said, this is a very simple example. Um, you can uh, use this to, as a template to kind of help you get going and bootstrap your PWA on flow. But also I have a much more fully fleshed out example in um, it's called the gain inflation, which I've included a Git repo and some video demos too that you can check out. Um, which is a full, full on game using all this stuff that we talked about where you can log in with magic, link accounts, unlink accounts, mint NFTs, run transactions, use SMS, um, login instead of email login. So a lot of fun stuff, but yeah, um, always feel free to reach out on discord or the forums. If any questions come up and happy building.